the Achilles tendon. The throw works just like a crowbar, where your leg is the lever and your hip is the fulcrum. The trick is positioning your body in just the right place. If you're just an inch off the placement of your thigh and hip, the amount of energy needed to throw an opponent can more than double. But performed correctly, Uchimata requires almost no energy, yet it can deliver up to 5,000 pounds of force. If it weren't for the mat, a throw like Uchimata would be enough to cause serious injury or even paralysis. You use the strength of your legs to maintain your dominant position while you secure the choke. Just a few pounds of pressure on the collar of his gi is enough to reduce the blood flow to the brain to a trickle and end the match. Hold this move for 10 seconds and the fighter will black out. Hold it just a bit longer and he's dead. By bending the elbow across the fulcrum of your hips, you're subjecting the weak joint to the leverage of two strong forces. The pull of your thighs on his shoulder and your hands on his wrists. As little as 1,000 pounds of force can be enough to destroy the elbow. The leverage of the armbar can supply much more than that. The sacrifice throw is a simple lesson in conservation of energy. The stronger the opponent attacks, the further he gets thrown. It works like a catapult, where your opponent's momentum supplies the counterweight. The faster he's going, the further he's going to fly. And the harder he's going to land. that land with the side, ball, or top of the foot, the gastrizin uses the heel to deliver the blow. This alignment of the heel, ankle, lower leg complex channels some 2,000 pounds of force into the opponent. More than enough to break a baseball bat. The higher you can lift your opponent in this move, the faster he'll hit the ground. It's not just your force working against him. His acceleration, due to gravity, can mean his head hits the ground with a 3,500 pound impact. On a hard surface like concrete, this is more than enough to cause a serious brain injury. First, the opponent's arm works as a lever to optimize your control. Second, your own back serves as a pivot point for the throw. The strength and stability of your back allows you to throw a much heavier opponent than in a move that requires you to lift him. This move uses your opponent's arm as a lever working against him. The greater the torque on his shoulder, the greater the pain inflicted. And exceeding the joint's normal range of motion causes more than just pain. The soft tissue, muscles, and the bone can all be seriously damaged by this pressure. The goal of this lock is to stretch the tendons at the top of the foot to the breaking point. The strongest tendons have a tensile force threshold of just over 400 pounds. Applying any more pressure than that can tear the tendons from their base or snap them in two. Because you don't have time to cock your arm in a surprise attack, bursting's effectiveness doesn't come from the rotational power of the torso. Instead, it's driven by the legs, which hurl you forward into your opponent. Both the block and the strike land with 300 pounds of force, more than enough to collapse the windpipe or fracture the delicate bones of the face. Doing the 360 defense requires you keep your, keep your body in motion at all times, using your arms to defend different angles of attack. The key is keeping your arms at an oblique angle with your hands open and straight so that you don't take any blows straight on. Each is deflected down the angle of your forearm, which reduces its impact. Your opponent is relying on his grip strength and outstretched arms to maintain the choke. The strength of your back and shoulder muscles is greater than the applied force of your opponent's hold. So it doesn't take much to break his grip. And the closer your hands are to your own neck, the greater the leverage. The disarm is basically a judo wrist lock and uses many of the same principles. By pulling your attacker forward as you turn, he loses his balance, giving you control of his wrist. The barrel of the gun then becomes a lever, allowing you to take the gun. Because you are using the muscles of your torso, which can deliver up to 10 times more force than the muscles of the wrist, the disarm works against an opponent who is much stronger than you. Usually an elbow strike from another martial art, Muay Thai. But because the metal doesn't deform on impact, like human bone, Every ounce of power is channeled directly into your opponent's face. With the twisting motion of the torso generating the force, 
and the stiff metal of the M16 providing the impact. It's enough to shatter a cheekbone or break a jaw. The combined momentum of your forward step, the twist of your torso, and the swing of the rifle, the butt stroke can strike your opponent at over 18 miles per hour, carrying well over 550 pounds of force. That's enough to drive a 16-penny nail through nearly two inches of pressure-treated wood. Add a follow-up slash and thrust with a bayonet, and the butt stroke becomes a real killer. But the real damage from the knee bar doesn't come from gravity. It comes from leverage. Once the knee is locked, your hips act like a fulcrum, and his leg acts like a lever, multiplying any force you apply. So even though the ligaments and tendons around the knee can sustain 1,700 newtons of force, the knee bar can load a lot more than that, enough to completely destroy the joint. This is opponent at a location above the center of mass, while using his sweeping leg to create a tripping point, which is below his opponent's center of mass. Once the loss of stability has occurred, gravity does the work and the damage. On the ground and on his back, your opponent is now vulnerable to any number of finishing strikes much like a nutcracker, your forearm and biceps apply pressure to your opponent's carotid arteries. Located on either side of the trachea, these two arteries are the only way to get blood to the brain. It can take less pressure than squeezing an orange to stop the flow of blood to the arteries. And with no blood flow, the brain shuts down almost instantly. Fight over. Roll of your opponent's leg, you turn his hip into a pivot point. And there are two forces being imparted about the pivot point. One by the arm above and one by the sweep below. These forces act as a couple, resulting in your opponent's rotation. Rotation that slams him right to the deck. And given the speed of rotation and the force of gravity, that impact could cause permanent injury.